Howard Schultz. My name is Sarah Ann Rickner. I've been a partner at your company, Starbucks, for three years. I'm also a union leader. Howard, I'm going to call you Howard because we're all friends here, right? I know you've heard a lot about Starbucks workers unionizing. It's been all over the news. But for some reason, we haven't heard much from you. Each unionized store has sent you personalized letters and we've sent emails, done social media posts. Heck, some stores have even gone on strike just to try and get your attention. We are trying to assume best intentions here, but it kind of feels like you're ghosting us. And I think I know why. You're scared. And I get it. Y your company is having all these strange new feelings. Uh, there are committee growing in areas you didn't have them before. You have to shave workers' rights every day just to look presentable for shareholders. Unionizing can be a scary time for any CEO, even an interim one. But Howie, I'm gonna call you Howie because we're all friends here, right? You don't need to be scared. I'd like to take a moment to address some of the fears you might have about unions and bargaining. So grab yourself a French press aged Sumatra and let's connect. First, you might have heard that the unions are some third party coming between you and the partners. In fact, I read that myself in a bunch of weekly communications that came from management and I got scared. But then I remembered, I'm in the union and I'm not some third party. I work at Starbucks. I got the green apron and everything. So then I went and I asked everyone else in Starbucks Workers United, and that's the union by the way, and it turns out that all of them also work at Starbucks, which makes sense if you think about it. I couldn't be in, say, a plumber's union. I'm not a plumber. I work at Starbucks. I'm in the Starbucks union. So rest assured, Howie, when you come to the bargaining table, and I know you're gonna be there because you want to be, because you care so much about your partners, like me, Sarah Ann, that you won't be sitting across from some freaky union black ops ninjas or old timey teamsters that'll come hit you with their lunch pails. It'll be us partners. We can even wear our green aprons, just so you won't get confused. You might be worried that we're demanding a hundred bucks an hour, unlimited vacations, free executive back rubs, but that's actually not the case. While those things do sound nice, uh, it's a little rich for my blood, Howie. Nah, we're thinking more along the lines of say, getting the benefits we already have in writing so that you or somebody else can't come along and Take them away whenever y'all want. Or guaranteed hours so that we can have more predictable schedules. And just being able to weigh in on future changes. After all, you do call us partners. I mean, we're not asking for a yacht or anything. <laughs> and even if we did, we certainly wouldn't need a glass bottom pool or a helicopter pad. That would be ostentatious and excessive. Jeez, that's two whole things you don't even have to be scared of. I'm freaking nailing this, woo! Let's keep going. Howie, I know that you're at Starbucks out of the pure love of coffee and partners like me, but those meal penny pinchers up at corporate are all about making that money. Some of them might have even put a bug in your ear about how a unionized workforce will eat up all the profits. And before you know it, those fancy pants are stuck wearing a barrel with suspenders. Look, Howie, we're not after anything extravagant. A pretty well-paid partner like me might make something like 32,000 a year. If I made a bit more, you'd still be able to keep the lights on, buddy. Even if all my partners made a little bit more, Starbucks would still be a multi-billion dollar, hugely profitable company. You might be scared that 
Starbucks's bottom line can't handle a unionized workforce. But Starbucks is stronger than that, damn it! Don't be so down on yourself, Howie. Let's do some affirmations. I am brave and courageous and not afraid of unions. Even if my workforce gets a modest raise, people will still buy my cake pops and pumpkin spice lattes. Whatever health benefits my workers have, I still get to keep my yacht. Wow, doesn't that feel good? I bet we've cleared up most of your fears by now, Howie. I see that grin. <laughs> but you still need to come to the bargaining table. And maybe you're afraid that coming to the table will make you look weak. But it's the complete opposite. It shows incredible strength of character to learn, grow, change your mind, and go against the status quo. That, my friend, is one of Starbucks's core values. I'm gonna blow your mind, Howie. That fear that you feel of being brave and doing the right thing is exactly how your partners have been feeling as they've unionized. We've had to speak out and have uncomfortable conversations, stand up to people with more power than us, strike, protest, lose out on benefits and raises, and lose our jobs. If we can do all of that and still have the emotional energy to sell coffee and brighten people's days, then you can have the courage and basic human decency to meet us at the bargaining table. We can even pool our tip money to rent you a nice chair for bargaining days. No, I insist. We're happy to do it for you, Howie. We're partners after all. We're waiting for your call. If you're not sure who to contact, reach out to any of the hundreds of unionized stores. Oh, some other things that you might have heard about us that are kind of scary. Um, we don't have claws. We're not going to hide under the bargaining table and grab at your ankles uh and we also do not shoot laser beams out of our eyeballs